This is Paranormal World Radio. I'm John Orozco, your narrator for this paranormal adventure. Now, through the years, we have been compiling information and videos from places that we have visited and taking note of the paranormal activity that we've encountered. Today, we will put that on display and show you some of the most interesting, if not unbelievable, proofs of the paranormal. We will visit the Elgin Casket Company, which is said to be frequented by spirits. This now warehouse was famous for being the casket company that delivered JFK's casket when he was assassinated. But apart from this bit of history, it has a paranormal background. The former Elgin Casket Warehouse today is a haunted attraction. During Halloween, the warehouse is transformed into a haunted warehouse with ghouls and demons not of the spiritual world but man-made, which could take away the mystique as a paranormal destination. But the fact is that we have seen and been a part of some paranormal activity. Tonight, we will present some of what we encountered during the filming. To give us a tour and background, we will be joined by the owner of Evil Intentions, Michael Fitzgerald, and correspondent to Paranormal World Radio, Ken Fredericks, who will walk us through the warehouse and its airy rooms. We will also see unbelievable proof of the paranormal from a once dormant toy to pictures that were taken that we just cannot explain. Later in the program, we will visit Bartonsville, Illinois, where the Pollock Hospital, or the renowned insane asylum, is said to be haunted. We will then take you to Rockford, Illinois, where we film the real and not-so-real paranormal activity at the Grant Camp Museum in Rockford, Illinois, conducted by a not so paranormal medium. You will have to stay tuned to see what this medium does. Let's get started as we visit the Elgin Casket Warehouse and learn a little bit about this haunted location and its activity. We're here at Evil Intentions Haunted House. I'm here with Jeremy Esquivel. He's my partner, co-partner, owners of uh, Evil Intentions Haunted House. And uh, just want to go over a few things here. It had some weird things happen to us. So, uh, Jeremy, what's happened to you here? What have you seen? I've seen full body ghosts uh, pop up. I've been standing in a room, saw one actually open a door, walk in behind me, and I turn around and it disappears. There was another one that was holding a door open and uh, actually chased into a hallway. And uh, as soon as I turned the corner, he went and disappeared. I've been chased out of here by footsteps. I, we've all heard noises when we've gone or upstairs little voices, things like that, and uh, there's always been the stories of an old man and a little kid who have uh, been running around here. An old man and a little kid ghost been running around here. Yeah, I think I've seen a little kid ghost in my room a long time ago through the fog. It was, it was a little creepy. Um, maybe you want to tell them what happened when we were working in the haunted house by ourselves that one day. Uh, so this one day I'm uh, up there building, putting together something, and uh, I yelled down into the courtyard, or I yelled out from the courtyard into the building for Mike to come uh, give me some screws because uh, I was putting together something. And I hear him back, okay, I'll be there in a second. And so I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm looking up there. He's not there and I turn around and he comes walking up the courtyard from the opposite direction of the haunted house. And I'm just like, where have you been, man? Like, waiting on screws. And he's like, what are you talking about? Like, I just talked to you like three seconds ago, <laughs> waiting for screws. And he's like, I've been over here talking to everyone by the back door. We haven't been in the haunt for the last like half hour. And I'm just like, I'm looking around, we all up in there with our flashlights going on and everything like that. But I literally had a conversation with apparently nobody. Apparently me, but I wasn't even there. there. Uh, another time when we were building, the first year we were here, uh, walked up through a hallway, there was a door being held open by an arm and a leg. And <laughs> I could run up to the door and all of a sudden it closes, the guy goes running off and I open the door, go after him. I see him duck into this other room and he just disappears. Never caught him, never saw never him. It's one time. I dropped off, we got some coffins in there, I dropped off some coffins here by myself, it was like one in the morning. I come walking out of the haunt, all of a sudden I start hearing footsteps like come chasing up behind me, get faster and faster, and let me tell you, I ran home from there. <laughs> I didn't even go to my truck, I just left. So you would pretty much say this place is haunted? Absolutely. Okay, I'm here with Jason Stratney, he's an actor at Evil Intentions Haunted House, and uh, you have some stories. I do, Let's actually, last year was my first year here, okay. and um, I was a clown in the church room. And in the church room, what happens is there's an altar, and it's got beads and different decorations on it. And I happened to be in there one day, and the beads ended up on the floor. So I walked over, picked them up, put them back on the altar. Maybe like five minutes later, heard the beads fall again, went and picked them back up, and they were just there. And it's and nothing to explain, nobody There's no breeze in there or anything? Nothing. So it's like one of those things that you don't really... It's like, can't really explain it. It keeps just, happening, it keeps happening. It's like we have shadow, like things that we feel like we follow us, and... We have different sounds that we hear constantly. What kind of sounds? Like um, anything from crawling to people walking up behind you, and you turn around to see who's there, and there's no, no one's there. I'm here with Bebo. Uh, he's probably got the most intense story, so uh, go for it. Well, I was walking down the hallway one day, and I saw a shadow walk past me, and you know I just ignored it, thinking it was an actor, 
because there's lots of actors coming out and in. So I kept walking by and I asked my friend Jason in the actor's room and asked him if anyone walked by or out of the actor's room. And he said no. So, you know, I, I was like, are you sure? He said no. He was sure that no one has walked out. So, you know, I just got kind of freaked out and I walked out and I kept walking down. And as I was walking down, I felt like as something was following behind me. And as I turned around, I saw this big, like six foot man staring down with orange braids and like a green, like a green suit. He just stared at me and then for like 10 seconds and then vanished. And I don't know where he was. What did you do after that? You know, I got freaked out and I started to cry. Like, really? Pussy. Yeah, this style has never done this since we've had it. Two years. I've never seen it do that. And as much as it's going on right now, there's no way this could have to Yeah. Apparently we can. Yeah, ready. So weird. You want to come up, John? You want to switch yeah. with me? I'll switch on. <laughs> that has never fucking done that. How many times have we walked down there just to see what they did? Just the babies just going off randomly. That's what we heard started, and we're like, <laughs> it's awesome. And Grandpa was all that happens around me all the time. I'm like, okay, I'm <laughs> <laughs> that is nuts. And then it says, I see I told you. you. This is where we, this shit always sends. Where I saw that thing walk down this hallway. It's where uh -huh. Lucas saw walk down the hallway. Yeah. I need you over here because you've got the mic. So okay. And how long has that been here? Two, Two years. Holy cow. And we got it at some, like, garage sale or secondhand store or something. I've never seen it do this. Never put batteries in it. Nothing. I'm gonna pick it up and see if it's got batteries. No, that's one thing I was gonna say when we first got here. Is it pinched or is something like that, maybe? Holy crap! No! No, yeah! Hold me. Hold me. When did it start saying off? Oh, mommy. There's your culprit. Wow. It's like Chuck, you relive. Where am I? Where am I? If it doesn't have batteries, we're all running. Yeah, I'm throwing it's this like in the thing. Kill switch or something. I mean, it was literally burnt up. Burnt up from a lighter and everything, too, and painted and thrown in dirt. And how the hell is this thing working? Just open the back of the Okay, it's off. Yeah, so you think. Yeah. I see you, mommy. Oh, shit. If it does something now, I'm throwing it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now. Wow. Yeah, I turned it back on. Nothing. There it goes. Motion activate halfway down the hall when I was coming down. Okay, <laughs> that's crazy. Hello, John! <laughs> well, apparently you're an evil intention. <laughs> Alright, guys, here at Evil Intentions Haunted House in the boiler room. This thing is old as hell. I believe it was built in the 1850s sometime. Our first year at Evil Intentions Haunted House, we were attempting to shoot a video down here for one of our haunted house videos and at the ending scene right at midnight everything broke everything went off everybody's cameras everybody's flashlights the fog machine whatever we had running everything went out all at once 
I was supposed to come out of this boiler right here with a butcher knife and pretend to slit somebody's throat. As soon as I opened this boiler door and came out, everything went pitch black, nobody could see nothing. Everybody pretty much panicked. No explanation for what happened at all. The guy had had the professional video camera sent it in to get fixed. They have no explanation for what happened to it. They said literally the insides were fried and they have no idea what happened. And I would like to introduce Medium, Jorianne, the coffee psychic. How are you doing? Hey, nice, nice to meet you, to meet Ken. You. Thanks for having me. Uh, Jorianne is here now in this part of the investigation to help explore the building and um, see if we can find anything. Uh, Jorianne, welcome to Evil Intentions. Hey, thanks for having me. Absolutely. And uh, if you don't mind me sharing, I'll share a little bit about myself with you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a psychic medium. I've been doing this work about 30 years. I do paranormal investigations. Of course, I do psychic readings. I've been featured on a lot of radio shows, a lot of TV shows for the work that I do. And I'm also, I'm also an exorcist. So talking with the dead, very important. Very important. Find out why they're here and what's going on. Excellent. Well, yeah. I'm excited. I know all of us are excited. So let's go, uh, let's go do a walkthrough. Let's do this thing. Okay, and I'm just, I'm just going to say right now, too, I'm also getting some heaviness on my chest right now. Right here over by the uh, casket and stuff. We're walking through this. Um, this place was made into a, it's a, like a haunted house for Halloween and stuff. And um, so we're walking through like a casket-like area here. So, I do hear the name Jean. Jeannie. Oh man, I'm hearing somebody say, help me, Jorianne, help me. Um, all right, so who are you? Okay, and I'm hearing, uh, I'm hearing, I'm hearing I'm Jane, and I'm hearing I got murdered here. That's what I heard, that's what I heard. I said, okay, honey, we'll see what we can do for you. Mm. I heard there are many of us are here. There are many of us here. Okay, and um, I would just want to say, uh, why are you here? Those people don't need to be here. This is our place. And then I just heard, you shouldn't be going down there. You shouldn't be going down there. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we just, we're just going to have to come down here. And we want to find out, um, so what I want to say to Randall is like, look, uh, we're not here to get you guys out of here, number one. We have not been asked to come and clear the building, so you don't have to worry about that. No one's here to hurt you guys, although we would like to see you in a better place in the light. Um, and we are available to do that work for you. And I'm getting none of us believe that, Jorian. This is a hack shack. It's a radio hack shack. And it scans the radio frequencies. It scans the radio frequencies and it goes through really quickly. So you'll hear a because it's going through the frequencies. But the spirits like to speak through it. That's how they get their messages through. And a lot of times you'll hear cussing and swearing coming over it, which if, you know, for the radio, they can't cuss and swear on the radio, so they'll get fined. So you know that's definitely a spirit interaction. See, even the FCC finds that. FCC, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> More or less like a white noise. In there, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Between the channels. So you can ask them questions? Yep. It just said hi. Did you hear? Hello. What is your name? Hello. Mm -hmm. What is your name and hello? There's anyone here with us. You need to speak up, be nice and clear. This device I have in my hand will allow you to get your message through. Thank you. Thank you and thank you. So is there anything you have to talk to us about or tell us? 
cut off man. Like cut off. Sound like cut off. Looking for and never heard again. Never heard. never heard from again. That's what I said. Hmm? What it means to be. What it means to be. Who are we speaking with? Please give me a name. Again, can you repeat that? I'm going to spend some time. Spend some time. Jam challenges. Mm -hmm. Sam, if you're here, can you say hi to us? Well, I heard trouble. Hey. Hi, Grand. Is old that gentleman. there's a woman, old gentleman? Did you guys hear that? One? No, that's me. Oh. That no no. <laughs> Just letting you know, that's me. It sounds like a man. Yeah. Oh, it may have it may have been also because I'm it didn't come from like back. Yeah, that's right. It didn't Okay, now that yeah, that probably is because I'm commanding that people leave right now is what I'm doing. It did not sound like you at all, Brady. Really. It did not. Okay. okay. I heard it. It sounded like an actual right. man breathing. Really. Yeah. All right. Holy fuck. I'm hearing voices, man. Well, I'm going to tell you what. John, I'm going to have to go now. Yeah. All right. Greg, come on. We all have to go stick together. Well. You can go this way. All right. Let's go this way. Otherwise, you guys might have to lift my foot. You heard it, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, sometimes, sometimes, like say when I'm commanding the spirits to leave, and I was breathing a little, uh... No, this is not like a female breath. So apparently okay. a couple of minutes ago on the uh, uh, camera system with all the cameras and the uh, IR light, they just I saw a shadow down here where this light is, so uh, me and Kyle are going to go check it out. Let's we see what we got. You should run too. This is actually a spot where last year all of us were here doing a band photo shoot and over in this exact same area there is this little light back over here you can see that's on. Something or somebody walked in front of this light, blocked it out, all of us went down there, there was nothing there and apparently it just happened again so let's see what we can find. This is also a spot where you guys caught some yeah, we footprints. Were, uh, we were doing a ghost hunt here maybe about a year ago, not quite. We found some footprints right around this corner. They appeared in the middle of the, of the floor, wandered around, went around the corner, and disappeared. And they were about, how big about? I'd say about a kid size five. About that big. They were small. And there were no kids here that night, so we don't know what that was. And they were barefoot. They were clearly barefoot. It's just, you know, one of those things where you can explain it to people, but just being here, it's the only actual way to really kind of understand the whole, like, vibe you get. This is where the footprints were. This is where the old footprints were. This is about, how long ago was that, Kyle? It was about a year. Yeah, they, and they went, like, halfway down, right? Made a beeline right for this corner, right behind the camera here. They came to right here and absolutely stopped. I mean, there was not another footprint at all. And if I don't know how well the camera is going to be able to see it, there's no there's no bare footprints here now. 
No, I mean, this is just dirt. The stairs are actually, here's one of them right here, and then there's, the main one is down over here. I don't know. This one of them? Yeah, this is one of the stairwells that just you get a bad vibe from. I don't know exactly where this goes to, but it definitely sucks. I'm gonna go sit up here for a second. And uh Is anybody here? Make another noise. Whoa. Now you heard that, right? That bang was that, man. That's yeah, there was a bang that was our crew, mm -hmm. but there was something just moving on top of that stairs. Look at my arms, I got the chills right now. I'm not gonna lie and say that didn't just freak me out. Do it again. Can you do that again? Make a noise, make a bang, make a sliding sound, scraping, something. Knock on the wall. Now, it's, all you guys have to understand is there are uh, noises here that just are normal. Like, what's, there's some noises that are coming from over here. There's some noises with the crew back over there. But there was definitely just a sliding, scraping noise on the top of those stairs. And, and that door is actually open. And I'm going to go do something I'll probably regret in a second and go see what's up there. I don't like this. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I don't like this at all. And it's just a whole bunch of tires. So I don't know, like there are actually tires stacked all the way to the, all the way to the top. So I don't know why there would be a noise over here. You guys can make your horror around you. That's cool. Does anybody here? I'm right here. Do something. Is this what you kicked? There's a cardboard box right here. Can you move that box? Spider web. That's Ken Barnhan up there. I don't think he really believes in ghosts. Let me tell you that trigger. Talk about that chain hanging off of his hip. I don't know why I'm doing this. Hey Ken, do you believe in ghosts? I do. Uh, I'm not normally freaked out, but I can be if they try hard enough. So do something. <laughs> oh shit. Oh. Holy shit. What? The fucking door just moved by itself. Did it really? Yeah. And there's a rock stopping it? Yeah. It moved by itself, man. And I was behind you. Yeah. I, there's no way I could move. It was up the stairs. I was still coming down. You didn't touch it, did you? No. Alright, seriously, if you're here, do something, because you're. You gotta do something more than make some creaking noises. <laughs> Or moving the door. What do you got? There's little rocks everywhere. Throw a rock, do something. There's rope, slide something. Okay, so we keep on hearing things. Yeah. We don't know where they're coming from. 
I went up there, nothing happened. Now that we came back down, the door moved, John saw it. I, I don't, it seems like we have to keep moving. We also conducted an investigation of the three cemeteries at Bartonsville, where we caught some EVPs or electronic voice phenomena. Again, what would be the name that you would have on your tombstone? Again, what would be the name that you would have on your tombstone? Are you here? You talk to me? Are you mad at your family, Rhonda, for what they did to you? What? Rhonda, are you here? You talk to me? Are you mad at your family around for what they did to you? What? From Bartonsville, we traveled north to Rockford, Illinois, where we found some illuminating paranormal activity at the Camp Grant Museum. A few years ago, Paranormal World Radio was invited to film an investigation and seance conducted by a local popular medium and investigator. During our investigation, we filmed a few low-level orbs traveling through different parts of the museum. But what really caught our eye was what we caught the medium doing during the seance. We have found that the places that this medium conducts investigations or seances could or do have paranormal activity. But the activity that this local medium has done has called into question his credibility. Soon after we saw this, we quit working with this medium. Paranormal World Radio shows all parts of the paranormal, be it true or in this case, not true. This is a case of non-paranormal activity. hope that this was entertaining and informative as to the activity that is truly paranormal, especially at the Elgin Casket Company Warehouse in Elgin, Illinois, at Bartonsville, Illinois, at the Pollock Hospital and Insane Asylum, at the Camp Grant Museum in Rockford, Illinois. Not all that was there was paranormal. In 2016, Paranormal World Radio will return with more locations and crazy paranormal programming that will leave you speechless and amazed. Look for us at www.paranormalworldradio.com or go to quantummediaproductions.com with one M and like us at the Paranormal World Radio Facebook page.